Why in the world is David Lynch's first movie, A Razorhead, so great? The hair. It must be the hair. Let me help you think through what this movie is saying or what it could be about, even though that's going to be very difficult coming up next. A Razorhead comes out in 1977, black and white photography, really interesting, amazing soundscape, ambient white noise, industrial sounds all over the place. This movie deserves your best headphones or sound system and turn it way up because perhaps the sound, and this is one reason it makes the movie great, the soundscape is driving the movie forward and creating the atmosphere for this movie, although the black and white photography is quite good, really very interesting. I highly recommend listening to this movie very carefully. This is a work of expressionism, and usually in the textbooks, they have this two-dimensional way of describing movies, more realistic to more expressionistic, and this movie falls definitely towards the expressionistic angle, which is that the movie's visuals and sounds are telling you how things feel or can be perceived Definitely not a documentary, perhaps the opposite of documentary. And then, of course, makes movies like this, first of all, they're hard to judge, usually, because they strike people differently. They are like dreams, and oftentimes dreams, other people's dreams can be off-putting, or we don't like to hear what other people's dreams were because they're crazy or they don't make sense to us. So that's often what a surrealistic or expressionistic movie or artwork does to us. For some of you, you're probably even asking, why is this a movie even? Why do people even love this movie? And you have to remember what the definition of a movie is. It's just simply moving pictures probably accompanied by sound. That's it. It doesn't have to have a story or narrative. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to have consistent characters. Just moving pictures. Thus, yes, Eraserhead is technically a movie. It is a work of gore, body experimentational horror, science fiction, fantasy, and I'm going to argue here, TV sitcoms, particularly 1950s up through the 1970s TV sitcoms. I mean, this is only a facet of the movie, but one kernel element, core element of the movie is... A basic 1950s TV show, the movie is sometimes funny, I think particularly in the first half, you know, in which a dispossessed young man, here Harry Spencer, played wonderfully by Jack Nance, just the hair makes him. Also his outfit, the suit, the pocket protector. And he is, you know, has a girlfriend, he works at a factory, he visits his, what would become perhaps if he got married, his future in-laws, and he learns that, well, his girlfriend is pregnant and they have a baby and they move in together, and then they have to deal with a baby. Basic sitcom scenarios. A young man dealing with his girlfriend's parents. A young man dealing with a baby. Dealing with his probably postpartum wife. And so, okay, this movie has some humor to it as far as these scenarios. And really a twisted jazz-like riff. <laughs> Almost unrecognizable, but it is recognizable on the 1950s formulaic TV shows that certainly David Lynch grew up with that are still playing in syndication on TV in the 1970s when this movie is released and are being aped repeated by TV shows in the 1970s coming out of America, which are canned and formulaic. And this movie takes it and just makes a nightmare world, which is a little bit funny, of those TV shows. You think I'm a pretty smart guy, huh? Yes, sir. Do you think I'll ever be as smart as you, David? I doubt it. <laughs> well, Henry, what do you know? Oh. I don't know much of anything. That's the movie I think is describing post-1960s Cultural Revolution era America a post-industrial landscape and soundscape, and then the existential hero, this Harry Spencer, thrust into this world. Now, although he's an existential hero in the, in the sense that he is an isolated figure on camera shown throughout the movie and moving through the movie's world, he, it's also a very fatalistic movie. It looks like he's being controlled by some kind of weird alien, weird warp human creature at the beginning of the movie, the man with the levers. And this character, Harry Spencer, just wanders through the landscape. He's being pushed around the landscape, forces of seduction, the woman across the hall from him. Of course, family forces that force him to, uh, obviously biological and reproductive forces, that force him to become a father and, and move into the, the household. And dreamlike forces, his dreams kind of control him and shape him and make him who he is. So I th find that this movie is actually attacking, potentially, existentialism as a philosophy of 
anti-reason absurdity where you are free to choose and freedom is you know the number one human value go be your own thing go live your own life this movie says there's no way in the world this main character is free or living his own life thus he's stuck in a bizarro anti-reason anti-logic world at one point even his head is lopped off in a dream at least but and of course in the movie it's hard to tell what a dream is from reality and in fact the melding the meshing of those as if the real world doesn't exist or it's a dream world the dream world is real world and vice versa classic surrealism in a way it's also the undermining the idea of reason or any kind of rationalism ordering the world of this young man in what could be an American industrial landscape. And that's why I think the sound is so crucial, these ambient white noise sounds. It kind of sounds to me like I used to live by an interstate highway and it was loud until I ignored the noise after a few days of living there. It sounds like the rushing by of cars combined with some kind of industrial, you know, factory hum sound with also like a whirlwind or a tornado kind of in the background, a mixture maybe of nature and industry at the same time thus the character being thrust into all of these scenarios and dealing with a baby and i must say babies make you go well a little crazy as a young parent or a first time parent they're up all night they poop they can't reason you can't talk to them and make sense of them and by default you must take care of them and this movie really seems to have a fear of babies but the main character is taking care of this warped baby thing and whatever in the world this is and yet he still is acts like a father. It's a very interesting movie because it's oftentimes been used to argue both for and against abortion. It does seem to be about reproductive rights in some way, but I think above all, if I had to pin this movie down and say it's about one thing, it's about insecurity in the modern world, in the late 20th century world. I mean, this character is very insecure. He has a hard time relating to people. I think his look is supposed to be nerdy deliberately, certainly dealing with the neighbor across the way, his girlfriend's mother, and just about anybody else. He has a hard time relating to anybody or anything. The insecurity of having a baby, a child early in life, accidentally here, and the insecurity of his girlfriend leaving him. I believe, given that you can clearly label this movie expressionistic, the movie shows you what it feels like to be an insecure young man, maybe just in general an insecure young person, certainly in the America of, say, 1977 or so. If you didn't love this movie, perfectly normal. In fact, if you hated this movie, perfectly normal. It doesn't make sense except to those it makes sense to. There's been so many people who have loved this movie, though. I've got to call it great, and I think just because of the soundscape overall and the look of this movie, and you know, this movie generates an image. It's very rare in movie history for, you know, images to become dominant or predominant. This movie has a whole lot of images that influence later, you know, directors, Charlie Kaufman, the Coen brothers, and so on, but the image of Eraserhead, his head of hair with the background being dark, this is a classic image in movie history, period, so... However the movie did it, it did generate a very famous film image. What do you think of Eraserhead? What do you think this movie is about or not about? What is your favorite image or scene from it? I'm very interested to hear what you have to say about Eraserhead. So let us know in the comments. Thank you for subscribing and watching this and liking it. Have a great day.